Shalom brothers and sisters, it's Brother Kwame and the name of this video is The Third Day Resurrection is in the Old Testament. That's right, the Third Day Resurrection is in the Old Testament. The Lord God has me doing this video today because a lot of people don't believe in the King Jesus, his son, and you know, and it's all because based on their claim, they think that the Old Testament doesn't say anything about, you know, Yahweh Shah being resurrected. That's right. Just because it doesn't say exactly that Yahweh Shah was resurrected on the third day. They think that the old they think that the New Testament, you know, is mythological. And the thing is, you know, I've heard this claim being made many times. And I'm just more than excited that the Lord God has chosen me to make a video about this topic. And the thing is, it's not true what the Old Testament only people are teaching. And the thing is, sometimes things are right there in our face, but we can't see it because we don't know what we are looking at. Now, I know a lot of the Old Testament people are not going to see it, but I will show it anyway for those who have spiritual eyes to see. Now, before we go to it, we have to understand how to see it. Why? Because, again, a lot of times we don't recognize what we are looking at. Let me open up with prayer before I get deep into it with the word. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I decrease myself and crucify myself that I may increase you, Lord God. I ask you to pour the cover off their eyes so they won't be blind to the things of you no more. I ask you to unplug the plugs that is on their ears so they won't be deaf to the things of you no more. I ask you to lock away any demon affiliation spirit that's going to try and deceive the viewers from your knowledge, Lord God. I ask you in return, Lord, joy and peace on this video so the listeners will be free from the lies of the world. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, Father God, Lord, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Now, I'm going to go ahead and jump straight into it with the word. Join us to the book of Matthew chapter thir 13, verse 9. Join us to the book of Matthew chapter 13, verse 9 and verse 10. And the word of the Lord says, Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, why speakest thou unto them in parables? See, Yahweh shall spoke in parables. That's right. Yahweh shall the king Jesus spoke in parables just like the Old Testament prophets did. And we're going to get into that later. But the thing is, Jesus did speak in parables. And the thing is, when you do speak in parables, people don't really understand what you are saying. So the disciples, they asked Jesus, why do you teach in parables? Now, verse 11. He answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Okay, people, this verse is very important. This verse is very important. To understand because it lets us know that certain understandings in the Bible are not given to everybody to understand that's right because the most high he decides who understands and who doesn't some people don't see Jesus in the Old Testament because the understanding wasn't given to them that's right the understanding was not given to them for whatever reason that it is, they will see it. If it be the most high will, they will see it at a point of time. And the point is, everybody is not going to be able to understand Jesus Christ. Now, with that being said, let's go to one of the most hardest verses 
to understand in the Old Testament concerning this topic. I'm sorry, people. We stand in the New Testament. I meant the New Testament. Join us to the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 46. Join us to the book of Luke, chapter 24, verse 46. And the word of the Lord says, And said unto them, Thus it is written. Watch this. Thus it is written. And thus it behooved. Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. I'm going to read that verse again. And the word of the Lord said, And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Now, People that doesn't believe in Yahweh Shai, they love this verse because it says, thus it is written. So they will always ask the question, what verse in the Old Testament says that Yahweh Shai would rise on the third day? That's right. They like to ask what verse in the Old Testament that Yahweh Shah would rise on the third day. They claim that it's not in the Old Testament anywhere. The problem is that they're trying to prove so hard that Yahweh Shah was not real. That they are missing that this verse. No, they're missing what this verse is actually saying. They try to prove so hard that Jesus Christ did not exist that they are missing the whole point what this verse is actually saying. Now let's go up to verse 44 in this same chapter in Luke chapter 24. We're going to start there. Verse 44. Now remember, this is Jesus Christ after he rose from the dead. And the word of the Lord says... And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you, while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Now watch this. Watch this, people. Then open he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. You see that? That they might understand the scriptures. Plural. You see that? Not scripture. Not one single verse. It says scriptures. Plural. Meaning more than one. That's why verse 44 says, which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then verse 45 says, Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. You see, Jesus Christ went to the Old Testament with the disciples and showed them multiple verses. That's right. He showed them multiple verses in the Old Testament that talked about him. It wasn't just one verse. It was a combination of verses. That's right. It was a combination of multiple verses that dealt with many aspects of his life. It wasn't just one verse, people. It was a combination of multiple verses that dealt with different aspects of his life. And that's including his death and resurrection on the third day. So now that we understand that it is a combination, it is a combination of multiple verses. Let's read Luke chapter 24 verse 46 again. And the word says... And it said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead in the third day. Now, we have to put 
the verses together the, to bring out the proper understanding. It's the same thing that Paul did when he was explaining Yahweh Shah in his time. That's right. This is the this is the same thing that Paul did when he was explaining Yahweh Shah to the people in his time. Join us to the book of Acts chapter 17 verse 2. Now join us to the book of Acts chapter 17 the second verse. And the word of the Lord says, "And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them and was with I'm sorry, people. I got a little word scrammer there. I'm sorry. Verse 2. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. You see that? So there we see the scriptures plural, meaning more than one. Paul used a combination of scriptures to use the validity of Yahweh Shai. That's right. Paul used the combination of scriptures to prove the validity of Yahweh Shai. Now watch this. Verse 3. And the word says, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered. And risen again from the dead. And that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. So this lets you know that this is nothing new. Because our people always had a problem understanding Yahweh Shai. Paul went through it. So he went into the scriptures to bring out the understanding. Why did Paul do it this way? Because he understood how the scriptures were written. Certain brothers are asking for one single verse, knowing that the Bible is more complex than that. Everything is not, everything is not right on the surface. A lot of things in this Bible are much deeper and it has to be brought out through the spirit. And I'm going to show y'all this with the word. Join us to the book of Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 8. Now join us to the book of Nehemiah chapter 8 the 8th verse. And the word of the Lord says. So they read in the book in the law of God distinctly. And gave the sense and caused them to understand to reading. You see everything is not known to everybody. Sometimes the sense of the text has to be given to the listeners. The scriptures has to be broken down for people to understand the mysteries. Now join us to the book of Hosea chapter 12 verse 10. Because I'm going to show y'all another biblical example. Join us to the book of Hosea chapter 12 the 10th verse and this is the most high God speaking and the word of the Lord says I have also spoken by the prophets and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets so the most high God said that the prophets use similitudes now what is a similitude a similitude is likeness or resemblance or like a person or thing that is like or a match or a counterpart of another. And a counterpart is like something or someone who closely resembles someone else. This is what similitude means. See, a lot of the lies of the lives of the men in the Old Testament prophets were submitted to, to Jesus Christ. That's right. The lives of the men in the Old Testament were submitted to, to Jesus Christ. Different parts of their lives were a reflection of Jesus Christ when he was going to rise on the scene. That's why Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7 said, Then said, I, lo, I come 
in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. This is Jesus. He comes in the volume of the book. In other words, he is spoken about all through the Old Testament. Join us to the book of John chapter 5 verse 39. Join us to the book of John chapter 5 verse 39. And this is Yahweh Shai talking. And this word says, search the scriptures for in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. Again, Jesus said, search the scriptures, plural. That's right. As in more than one. Jesus said, the scriptures testify of me. See, the lives of our forefathers were a shadow of Yahweh Shai. That's the complexity of the most high will and design. He incorporated elements of Yahweh Shai within his servants and the prophets. The Bible is not as simple as a lot of people want it to be. You have to put the time in through the spirit of the most high and through the surface. Now, with all that being said, let's deal with the third Resurrection, the third day resurrection of Yahweh Shai. Let's deal with this. Because it is in the Old Testament. It's just not as simple as a lot of people want it to be. Now let's go back to Luke chapter 24 verse 46 real quick. Let's go back to Luke chapter 24 verse 46 real fast. And the word says, And said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead and the third day. So we understand now that Jesus Christ is referring to more than one verse here. That's right. In reference to his suffering and resurrection on the third day. And we also understand that the prophets spoke in militudes. That's right. The prophet spoke in similitudes. Let's start in the book of Psalms chapter 16 verse 9. Join us to the book of Psalms chapter 16 verse 9. Join us to the book of Psalms chapter 16, the ninth verse. And we are about to put you know, the pieces together. Join us to the book of Psalms chapter 16 verse 9. And the word of the Lord says, Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth my flesh also shall rest in hope okay now so david said that his flesh shall his flesh shall rest in hope now verse 10 the word says for thou wilt not leave my soul in hell neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption now we know that David wrote this verse, but the deeper understanding, David was prophetically speaking about Yahweh Shai. Notice he said that his soul shall not be left in hell, meaning the grave. But we know that David's body never left the grave. He also said that he will not see corruption. We know that David's body never rose from the dead. And then he said that he won't see corruption. But we do know that David's body did decompose in his flesh. Did to see corruption. That's right. His flesh did to see corruption. But why? Because he never came up out of the grave. We all know that fleshly bodies decay at time. That's right. Fleshly bodies, all fleshly bodies decay over time. So this scriptures, these scriptures cannot be talking about David here. And we all know that David was not a false prophet. So if this verse 
is talking about David, then David had to rise from the dead. But again, we know that David did not rise from the dead. We know this. And if you people say that he did, where could we find this information? Because there is no record at all in the scriptures stating this. That's right. There is no information at all, no record at all in the scriptures stating that David rose from the dead. So therefore, David was not talking about himself. He was prophesying about Yahweh Shai. That's right. David was prophesying about Yahweh Shai's resurrection. I want you guys to join me now to Acts. Join me to Acts chapter 2 verse 29. Join me to the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 29. Acts chapter 2 verse 29 and the word of the Lord says, Men and brethren, and hold up before I begin reading this verse. This is Peter speaking. And the word says, Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. So Peter was telling the brethren that David's gravesite is right here. We can see it, and we can see that he can clear that he clearly didn't rise from the dead. Now let's deal with verse thirty, and the word says. Therefore, being a prophet, okay, David was a prophet, and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. Now, let's deal with verse 31. And this, this is David. This is King David. It's talking. He means the King David. It's talking about David. He, David, seeing this before Spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. Peter was stating that David was prophesying about the Lord King Jesus resurrection. See, Peter understood that David was prophesying about Yahweh Shai. That's right. David was not talking about himself. Because Yahweh Shai died and he rose from the dead. His body did not decay. Jesus didn't see corruption. Now, a lot of people don't want to accept Jesus Christ in the New Testament. But it lines up perfectly nonetheless. Now, verse 32. And the word of the Lord says, this Jesus hath God raised up, wherefore we all are witnesses. This is one example of a prophet bringing out similitude to bring out a deeper understanding. Now let's go back to the book of Psalms chapter 16 verse 10. And the word of the Lord says, for thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither will thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Now, we should understand that this is talking about Yahweh Shai. And that his soul was not left in hell. Brothers and sisters, I'm about to end this video. I urge you guys to really start studying your Bibles and learning and learning what, you know, the Lord God was speaking about, what he was talking about. You know, you have to put the puzzles together. You got to search the Lord God in the spirit. You know, these prophets and stuff, you know, it was all linked to Jesus. These prophets in the Old Testament, it was all linked to Jesus' resurrection. And, you know, it's more information as well. But I'm about to end this video. I got to cut it short, but I really hope you guys, I pray that you guys receive this knowledge today for this understanding. You no, know, if you can't understand the Bible, people, all you got to do is pray to God and ask him the spiritual understanding. Give 
you spiritual understanding. You got to you got to talk to God. You just can't sit around and believe what you want to believe or whatever you grew up believing in church in a Baptist church or whatever kind of church it was. You got to get into this word and ask God to really help you read and study to show you things in this Bible. He will guide you. He will walk with you, people. Y'all got to open up y'all spiritual eyes and spiritual ears and start learning this Bible because God said, if anybody teach another gospel, let them be a curse. So it's very important to understand what this Bible is really saying. Because there's many cursed people walking around. Kids, don't do drugs. It's Brother Kwame, and I'm out. Shalom. I love you all.